This is KGW News at Noon. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Brenda Braxton. Our top story this afternoon, a longtime Portland police employee and her husband are facing charges today for a man's death in the Goose Hollow neighborhood almost two years ago. Officers arrested the couple on Friday. Bruce Chere faces manslaughter and assault charges. His wife, Karen Chere, was an administrative supervisor for PPB for 28 years. She's charged with hindering prosecution, official misconduct, and tampering with physical evidence. In April of 2021, the body of 58-year-old Jack Decker was found on the sidewalk near Providence Park. Portland police say Decker died from homicidal violence, but there's no word yet how he was killed. Police haven't told us anything about how the couple knew Decker or how Karen Sheree allegedly hindered prosecution. She was placed on administrative leave back in April of 2021. New this afternoon, we've learned that Cracker Barrel has closed the rest of its restaurants in the Portland area. The company tells us the two restaurants, one in Tualatin and one in Beaverton, are closing, along with the restaurant in Bend, effective immediately. The restaurants opened to big fanfare and long lines back in 2017. But the company closed the restaurant at Jansen Beach last summer, apparently due to security issues. Today, the company issued a statement telling us we are saddened that we have been unable to overcome the impact the pandemic has had on our business and have made the difficult decision to close. Well, spring hasn't sprung yet, but it's about to. Rod, that's the big weather headline this afternoon. Yeah, Brenda, this is what we're waiting. The clocks are ticking. We're winding down. 224 would be the magic moment of the vernal equinox and the beginning of the new season. Uh, interesting to note because we think of the equinox as 12 and 12, uh, equal daylight and darkness, but it doesn't work perfectly once you get north of the equator, which of course we are. So we actually started getting more daylight than darkness over the weekend sunset tonight at 723. Now, not the prettiest of spring days. It is chilly out there. We have scattered showers across most regions overall across Oregon and Washington. Snow levels in the mountains are uh, hovering right about 3,000 feet. They picked up three inches at Meadows and Timberline going back to last night. Haven't had much new snow during the day today. Here are the clouds from our Snookwinds Casino Resort camera in Lincoln City. 51 degrees there. Downtown Portland, about the same at 50, and it still looks like our temperatures will be holding fairly steady the rest of the afternoon. Scattered showers continue to be on the radar. At most, we get up to about 53. Now, tomorrow's the first full day of spring. Temperatures are going to go up, mm. but I still have that crash in the temperature <laughs> department later in the week on my seven day coming up. Taking us on a roller coaster. Thank you, sir. Well, tomorrow, Oregon lawmakers will hold a work session on a bill to increase fines and jail time for people found guilty of organizing street racing events. It's timely, too, because there was another street takeover this weekend near Lloyd Center here in Portland. Blair Best talked with a woman who watched in fear from her living room window. It's an alarming sight. Streets blocked and cars doing donuts, burnouts and other stunts, while hundreds of people stand by and watch. Some dangerously close to the action, taunting the drivers on. These videos from Saturday night are easy to find on social media's Snapchat Maps feature. They show just how dangerous illegal sideshows like this can be. Last year, a 26-year-old was hit and killed by a street racer while she was waiting for a bus. I just get so angry at, at the situation what happens. I just go get a slow boil. Claudia lives near the intersection of Northeast 13th and Multnomah, the scene of Portland's latest street takeover Saturday night. Claudia has witnessed more than half a dozen of these since she moved into her Northeast Portland condo 15 years ago. And you can see smoke because there's all kinds of smoke that's let off from the tires that are burning when they're chasing each other in circles. And that's not to mention the noise. To me, it's a, a situation that warrants police 
action. In the past, Portland police have said it's hard for them to stop street racing due to the number of cars blocking the roads and making it difficult for them to get through. Portland police have not responded to KGW's request for comment on this latest race. I think that it's not good. I think that the police should respond. It's a volatile situation. One that's even caught the attention of state lawmakers, who proposed a bill last month to make laws tougher for those who organize street races and takeover events. There will be a work session on that bill on Tuesday. Claudia has also written to state senators demanding action. If a stronger law will be enforced more um, uh, consistently, then yeah, let's do that. Blair Best, KGW News. Vancouver police are looking for a mother and daughter who've been missing now for more than a week. 27-year-old Mache Melendez and her 8-year-old daughter Layla Stewart were last seen on the morning of Sunday, March 12th in the 7700 block of Vancouver Mall Drive. Police found Mache's car yesterday near that location. If you see them or if you have any information about where they could be, you're asked to call Vancouver police. Penalties could increase for people who deal fentanyl in Oregon or get caught with the drug. DAs statewide say a bill in the legislature would close dangerous loopholes and make treatment mandatory. Here's KGW's Tim Gordon with more. There is plenty of debate about Oregon's voter-approved Measure 110, which decriminalized low-level drug possession even for hard drugs. But in the midst of a fentanyl epidemic, lawmakers are considering closing a gap that allows for possession of up to five grams of fentanyl before it's even a misdemeanor. I think it's an absolute crisis. Um, it is everywhere within your community. Dan Primus is the top prosecutor in rural Umatilla County and president of the Oregon District Attorney's Association, which supports House Bill 2645, aimed at breaking the grip of fentanyl. In Umatilla County, with a population of 80,000, Primus says law enforcement seized a record 72,000 pills containing fentanyl last year and are on track to break that record in 2023, having already seized 54,000 pills. It's something that we're seeing a steady increase of, and obviously we're seeing the consequence of it with the loss of life throughout the state. We want to save lives, period. And this is a step towards how do we help do that. At a committee hearing this week in Salem, lawmakers talked about the bill, which would make possession of from one to five grams of fentanyl a misdemeanor and anything more a felony. It also makes mandatory treatment a provision for offenders charged with possession. And that's really kind of the hope as well, is to see what we can do about uh, assisting individuals with treatment and going through the treatment process because we know that that is a that is a gap there's a gap there as well. House Bill 2645 also sets penalty levels for pills containing fentanyl because that is the form it comes in most of the time. For those dealing the deadly drug, that means there could be tougher penalties treating fentanyl dealers the same as heroin dealers in court. You want to prevent those that are that are that are supplying and and, and quite frankly killing those within your community with this addiction issue. And that's this bill allows for that as well. Tim Gordon, KGW News.